I want to give you an introduction to some of the terminology used on the lathe because it will come up over and over again in uh, both the videos that I'm doing as well as on my website minilathe.com and pretty much anywhere else you go on the internet or in a book to read about lathes you'll come across a lot of terms that are used over and over again so I'll give you a quick breakdown on the basic terms. This left end of the lathe here and this heavy uh, machined block here is called the headstock and it's in many ways the heart of the lathe. Uh, the other end of the lathe that has this movable component here is, is called the tailstock. So this whole assembly here is called the tailstock. So you have a headstock, you have a tailstock. Supporting everything on the lathe, including the headstock and the tailstock, is this heavy base casting here known as the bed. And the top part of the bed is precision machined, and the machined part of it is called the ways, W-A-Y-S. And the uh, carriage, which I'm moving right now, is this assembly here. All of this together is referred to as the carriage. You can see I'm moving it back and forth across the ways. And I'm doing that by turning this wheel, this hand wheel here, which is called the carriage hand wheel. All right, so the carriage hand wheel moves the carriage along the ways, and similarly I can uh, move the tailstock along the ways. Um, not surprisingly, this hand wheel back here is called the tailstock hand wheel, and as I rotate it, it causes this um, tip calibrated shaft or shank to come out here. And this is called the tailstock ram sometimes referred to as the tailstock spindle. Now, going back to the headstock end, we have, of course, our chuck. This is often just referred to as the chuck, but there, in fact, are different chucks that can be used on the lathe. This particular one is three inches in diameter, and it has three jaws, so it's referred to as a three-inch, three-jaw chuck and that's the standard or stock chuck that comes with the mini lathe. But you can buy uh, additional accessory chucks. This one has four jaws and it's three inches in diameter. So it's referred to as a three inch four jaw chuck. And there are larger diameter chucks such as a four inch three jaw and a four inch four jaw and even a five inch three jaw and a five inch four jaw. So different chucks have different capacities obviously as they get bigger you can hold bigger materials in them, um, and there are a lot of advantages to the four-jaw chuck for certain types of work. So the three-jaw chuck is very convenient for most routine work, but there are some specialized types of work that can only be done on the four-jaw chuck. So uh, after you gain some experience, you pretty much need to have at least one of each. Now just a few more terms. Uh, on top of this carriage assembly here, we have two sub-assemblies, three really. The first one we'll talk about is this one. As I rotate this wheel, which is referred to as the cross slide or the cross slide hand wheel. And the cross slide technically is this sliding uh, base here that moves perpendicular to the way as it moves in and out as I move this hand wheel. And it's used to advance the cutting tool into a workpiece to reduce the workpiece diameter or to cut a face on the end of the workpiece. On top of that is this rotating assembly. It's locked right now so I can't rotate it, but when it's uh, loosened it can be rotated 360 degrees and it is referred to as the compound or sometimes the compound slide and uh, presumably that's because it lets you cut compound angles relative to the cross slide by setting whatever angle you want on this protractor down here. And as you might expect, this hand wheel on the compound is called the compound hand wheel. At the top of this stack uh, is what we call the tool holder, sometimes called the tool post. And uh, it is used to hold your cutting tool. So I have a, a cutting tool mounted in here. and. Uh, that's pretty much it for now. We'll uh, cover some other, there are plenty of other terms, but we don't need to know them right at this point in time. So I'll stop there and uh, we'll get to the others in future videos. 
Let's move in a little closer here and look at this assembly here. This whole unit together is referred to as the carriage and it moves back and forth on the ways as we noted earlier. But this part here forms the base of a stack of three things. We have the cross slide and then on top of that we have the compound slide and on top of that we have the tool post or tool holder. The cross slide moves perpendicular back and forth across the ways and it's used to uh, move the cutting tool, advance the cutting tool into the work for example to reduce the diameter of the workpiece we would advance the uh, cross slide closer to the work. The compound is used typically for cutting angled uh, work such as a taper or a bevel on a workpiece but it has other purposes as well but as you see here is a small protractor and this whole assembly can be loosened and rotated and set to whatever angle you want. So I assume the reason it's called a compound is that it allows you to cut compound angles. On top of that is this uh, square black tool post or tool holder and I have a tool mounted in here as you can see. There are various types of tool holders that can be mounted here and this is the standard or stock tool holder that comes with the mini lathe. You can also see that there are hand wheels here. This is called the cross slide hand wheel and this is the compound hand wheel. And they move uh, the corresponding components, the cross slide in and out or the compound in and out. Uh, further down here we have the half nut lever. And the half nut lever is used to engage the power feed which can be used to move the carriage under control of the motor so you don't have to turn the hand wheel uh, and it's also used in a very similar fashion for cutting threads uh, under power from the lathe. The main difference is that when you're cutting threads the lead screw turns more slowly.